Welcome back ladies and gentlemen and thank you for tuning in for more Freelancer. This time this is the start of a series as a Freelancer System Guide where I'll be talking about every system and its contents. What better way to start off the, such a series as with Planet Manhattan, the starting planet of the player, when you start the story and multiplayer. Manhattan lies in the New York system, which is in the center of the serious sector. Manhattan is... Well, it's quite a bit to offer, honestly. There are several ships on sale, the Patriot, the Star Trekker and the Rhino Transporter. I will not be going over every commodity that the planet sells or buys, Noteworthy, however, is the fact that Cardamine isn't um, listed as the commodity is buying, which lies at 1,500 sea bills, but only is acknowledged as medium price. Going for equipment, Manhattan is pretty basic as it's the first planet you'll ever own. Class up to class 2 shielding for every ship type, countermeasure dropper, drone mines, a few basic missiles, the Justice Mark 1, 2, 3, and Turret Mark 1 and 2, always reaching from, from weapon class 1, 2, 3. Same with the lever blade. Noteworthy, however, are the Magma Hammer and the Vengeance weapons, since they are both class 5. So, some lore. Founded in the year 1 AS, Manhattan was the first human colony established in the serious sector. Over the last eight centuries it has grown into a teeming world of 220 million people who live and work in a single city that covers the vast majority of the planet. Nearly the entire population is dedicated to the manifest destiny of the liberty free market and today Manhattan is the hub of a vast commercial network that stretches into almost every corner of Sirius. While going to Manhattan has become a commonly accepted phrase for leaving home to seek your fortune, the cost of living on Manhattan itself is extravagantly high. If a trend is new and exciting and expensive, then it almost certainly originates here. Up next we have Newark Station, just next to Planet Manhattan. It hasn't much on commodities, but it gets a few good deals you can make with either beryllium, alien organisms or polymers. The equipment is also pretty much on the basic end of the spectrum, just on the civilian side. Newark Station is the local headquarters for interspace commerce, IC, one of the largest financial concerns in the serious sector. While IC was initially responsible for financing the construction of the vast jump gate and trade lane network that connects the various colonies, it was forced to divest itself of these holdings as a result of the Rhineland Kuzari trade embargo in 521 AS. IC has since transitioned to ensuring cargo shipments within and between the various colonies. The remainder of the Newark Station population is a constant shifting crowd of traders, technocrats, executives and bounty hunters, all cutting deals to <laughs> ensure and arrange the transport and protection of their goods. From here on out we go to the Trenton outpost right over planet Manhattan. It is a very central station, it has nothing too interesting or exciting to it. But you may be able to make a decent bargain or two. It has mostly trading opportunities at best, if you care for those things. Equipment is again on the civilian end of things, so nothing too spectacular, I promise. Trenton Outpost is home to the Universal Shipping, one of the big three family of the Liberty companies that also include Agera Technologies and Deep Space Engineering. Universal Shipping made its fortune by gambling on shipping silver from California to Colorado for use in terraforming Los Angeles long before jump gates and trade lanes reduced the risk of transporting goods over such long distances. Universal then commended 
has cemented its reputation in the as a premier of Liberty Shipping Company in a 181 AS by signing a contract to handle all shipping between Agera Technologies facilities and Detroit Munitions is a bit of an oddball. It is located in the New York system, a little bit on the side. It has, however, a few interesting component parts. It has class 6 weaponry and class 7 weaponry with the advanced flashpoint and advanced debilitator turret, which is quite something, honestly. Then again, Detroit is the headquarters for Detroit Munitions, one of the oldest privately owned companies in Liberty. Detroit has been manufacturing small and medium sized arms since its founding by Patriarch Ed Garner in 614 AS. His name still graces the company's most popular line of blasters. Around Detroit Munitions, however, is usually a large number of Xeno behind Manhattan in a junk field the can be found base Rochester of the Junkers. Rochester base is interesting. It offers a ship for sale, the Bloodhound, which you'll be seeing in a moment. It also offers illegal goods and neobium. And has class 4 weaponry and class 3 shields and also brings early access to the deluxe thruster. Might be interesting at some point. Here you can see the Bloodhound for a moment if you're un unfamiliar with it. So, the Junkers. Let's do this. Where there is junk, there are the Junkers. They've been around since the earliest days of the trade lanes. Descended from the working classes, they involved within the house systems as a sort of a necessary evil handling the dirty work that no one else would. They do well salvaging valuable materials from the ever-increasing debris fields throughout Sirius, with a notable exception of Kozari. To this day they remain held at bay by the Hokosha. Anyone who deals with the Junkers knows they live by a strict code. If you're not a Junker, you're not part of the family. A Junker will double-cross you without a second thought and they're fiercely protective of each other. Most house corporations consider the Junkers to be simple criminals, but Junkers will occasionally do favors for the police, turning in the odd mid-level criminal or letting them know about the occasional drug shipment. So despite some harassment, the police stop short of shutting them down. The infrequent police cleanup operations are little more than an exercise in public relations though there is no love lost between the two groups. The Junkers make their official money from salvaging debris within the fields, but also a good deal going with variable with various criminals who like their no questions asked policy. Tolerated by the government, Junkers sometimes deal in contraband, but they are extremely hard to catch red-handed. They are frequently patronized by the criminal element for the refuge they offer within the most often hostile territory of house capital systems. Liberty has two groups of junkers. A major population in the New York system and a smaller enclave in Texas. The junker base of operations in New London is located near the shipyards within the South Hampton debris field. In New Berlin they scavenge the remaining pockets of industrial waste and scrap within the asteroid fields. Their latest foray is a departure, a base at the border worlds. Attacked by the ALG operation in Sigma 13, they have set up shop near the facility and do most of the dirty work picking off the best loot from the old ships for themselves. It also serves as a convenient launching point for cardamine and artifact runs into New Berlin. Long distance smuggling is new for the faction, which is still perfecting its skill.
Up next we have Baltimore Shipyard. Baltimore Shipyard lays more or less in the heart of Liberty and offers a good deal for shiphole plates. That aside, Deep Space Engineering constructed the Baltimore Shipyard as a part of its overall operations, but when it's not a full capacity it also builds prison ships and cruise liners for sale on spec. Right next to Baltimore Shipyard we have the police station Fort Bush. Only notable committee prices the copper value of 360, which is quite good. That aside, the usual equipment is nothing too special, so I will not cover that. Fort Bush was one of the earliest outposts established during the settlement of Liberty. As Liberty expanded, Fort Bush became a popular jumping off point for a number of wild business ventures as explorers set out to make their fortune among the stars. Today Fort Bush provides a haven for traders from all over Sirius who have business to conduct in Liberty. A branch of Liberty Police Incorporated LP, LPI headquartered aboard the station helps maintain the peace necessary to a free economy by suppressing pirate activity in the debris fields and administrating automatic weapon platforms that defend the nearby Great Lane Junction. Pittsburgh is visited during the main story and has cheap drinks, but little else, as King also says. It's got nothing too interesting in the point of trading. It's got the Rhino on sale, however, and basic civil equipment. Pittsburgh is covered by a large, single, vast desert, broken only by large, rocky outcroppings that have yet to be consumed by the sand. Without any ice asteroids in the close proximity, the planet was not considered a good candidate for terraforming and remained sparsely populated until a full-scale mineral survey in 650 AS pinpointed deposits of boron in the form of borax salts deep within the Quarida Plateau. A mining operation was established on the planet in 660 AS by Deep Space Engineering to exploit these deposits. It is not and it's now the only raw material extraction facility within Liberty Space. Turning from there, we have the planet Maine. <sighs> it's an icy moon, and, well, DSE does some field testing there. Norfolk Shipyard of the Liberty Navy sits together with battleship Missouri near Zone 21. It is owned by the Navy and, all things considered, not too interesting, though high temperature alloy and polymers bring good prices here. The equipment is fairly basic, however, so let's get to the interesting part. The Norfolk Shipyard in continuous operation since its construction in 230 AS. It has the honor of being the oldest functional shipyard in the Sirius sector. The facilities at Norfolk are chiefly used by the Liberty Navy. a single turn away from that is, as mentioned, the battleship Missouri, with several informations classified and on offer the Liberty Navy Defender, with optional class 4 weaponry also for sale. The battleship Missouri is the flagship of the Liberty Navy. The Missouri has state-of-the-art weaponry and is constructed around a unique triple hull design that incorporates integrated armor plating. The armor plating is specifically manufactured in the Norfolk shipyards for the Liberty Navy using a classified propri bleh, proprietary process. The Missouri has not yet seen action in any major conflicts, but its presence serves both as a warning and a reminder to those who visit the New York system of the indomitable Liberty spirit. Captain Wendy White currently commands the Missouri. Here, however, is something small, the Alaska Jump Gate with its two weapon platforms within Zone 21. Not much more.
to say to that. You'll know it from the story. Deeply hidden inside the Badlands, there is Buffalo Base of the Liberty Rogues. It is more or less Terra Headquarters, so to speak. And it has a few interesting properties, considering their equipment on sale. They also sail a rather famous ship used by the outcasts and Lane Eggers, the Dagger, a favorite of mine personally. But let's get to the interesting things. I'll get to the location a bit later. The base actually has, all things considered, at best mediocre equipment. However, a few things stand out. The class 2 shield, class 3 weaponry and such is not interesting. The debilitated turret, however, is class 6. Has the deluxe thruster. They also have the flashpoint gun. And way, way more. They also have improvised countermeasure dropper, moonstalker missile, class 5, class 3 shields, so far so good. Star Killer Torpedo Launcher, Sweeper Missile, Class 4, a few mines, the Toth Turret, Class 6, together with the Uziel and Visajo, Class 5, and 7 Weaponry, representatively. The Rogues are a product of two centuries systematic lower class cleansing that occurred in the Liberty Planets of Manhattan, Denver, and Los Angeles. Relocated to the Texas prison system, many of them end up planet site on Hudson upon release. Some staying straight and joining the population, scratching out a living, the rest resume their life of crime, often ending up vaporized by the pursuing Liberty Police Patrol or back in prison for longer stretches, manning the prison factories that are the economic lifeblood of the Texas system. Some say that the massive LPI, LPI, LPI Roundups of even minor offenders in Liberty have more to do with staffing these plants cheaply than reducing crime. Fresh out of the incubator of the Texas prison system, they have limited choices. Either work in the factories of Hudson for a pittance, join the bounty hunters and hunt down their former brethren, go radical and hook up with the Xenos or rejoin their former partners in crime. The latter path is the obvious one for most. Simply put, these are not too quick opportunists, people willing to do whatever it takes to make a buck and get by until tomorrow. Usually they end up taking the fall for anything illegal that occurs in Liberty, whether they are involved or not. The rogues are generally a disorganized lot, they are responsible for the most trade line attacks in Liberty space and the adjacent independent worlds usually operating in groups of only two or three ships, without much grasp of advanced tactics. They also provide shelter for the outcasts in exchange for Cardamine. Recently they've been becoming smugglers for much of the Cardamine and Liberty space, supplementing even replacing the outcasts on certain high-risk routes. This has made them accomplices to the most persecuted criminal group in Liberty space. They admire the outcasts, wishing they could be as smart as careful as the Edgeworld faction but they regard the LPI as their ultimate masters, perhaps aware that soon they will probably be under the LPI's thumb once again. The primary rogue base is Buffalo, deep within the confines of the Badlands of New York. Secondary bases are in the Whitney Asteroid Field in California, the Repu Cloud in Galileo, the Corcovado <laughs> Cloud Corcovado Field in Cortez and the Rangfel Rangel Field in Hudson. Rogues are frequently visitors to Junkers and Lane Hacker bases. Since we're on the Badlands, there are a few interesting things. Let's take a look at this Patrol 27. There are three records inside of the Badlands, all carrying the same level 3 equipment and a bit of ammunition. Nothing too interesting, and especially within a strong radiation cloud, but absolutely worth the mention coming for a system guide. A 
Another wreck within the Badlands is the Aggressor Bounty Hunter. It doesn't have too much on it as well. Few basic weapons, class 2 weaponry of the Bounty Hunters, which you may have not come across by at this point, so might be worth a look. Might be not. Flint is something to look at. It's got some basic weaponry, which is not too interesting, honestly. What's more interesting is the loot he carries. Maybe contain Carlemine aboard. I sadly seem to have cut out the exact location on the map. How very sad. <laughs> Can't give you everything on a silver platter now, can I? I'll give you a hit though. It's on the left side of the cloud. Ah, good old Itaka Research Station. Well, not much from this one, except the close proximity to the Magellan Jump Gate. You wouldn't think I forget the West Point Military Academy, do you? Especially if it's right next to Planet Manhattan, so to speak. However, I'm getting scanned here, so before I read out, I'm getting the hell out of here. West Point Military Academy has been the training has been training the best and brightest officers in the Liberty Military for over 600 years. The commandant for West Point is currently Admiral Walter Evans and his staff includes decorated veterans such as Captain Jason Findlay and Captain Marcus Walker. It's all dark. This here is an odd little constellation if I'm being honest. These are just storage containers within the Detroit debris field and six weapon platforms of the not-so-nice kind, however, they aren't that well directed, honestly. I told you a little bit about them when my story playthrough. They only shoot in one direction, meaning this is the dangerous side, this is the harmless side. Sadly, it can't be seen too well, but here I could be fired upon. Here I couldn't. It is absolutely harmless to take them out from behind, but from the front they're absolutely deadly. Now, honestly these are just storage containers that are here for whatever purpose, if only for decoration. I don't know. I don't mind if I'm being honest. It's not the worst thing there is. So, let's go with that. The Jersey debris field, an industrial dumping ground left from the early expansion efforts, is now frequented by junkers and rogues. The Jersey debris field, a floating junkyard, the byproduct of orbital development around Manhattan. Some criminal activity is present, chiefly drug runners and smugglers, along with the veteran junkers who comb the field looking for scraps and parts. The Pittsburgh debris field, however. A cloud of abandoned ships, parts and other scrap pulled into the planet Pittsburgh's gravity well from Baltimore shipyard over their centuries. The Pittsburgh debris field is frequently loose as covered by the rogues. Zone 21. All information concerning Zone 21 is classified by the Liberty Navy and the area protected by a minefield. Any unauthorized ships attempting to breach Zone 21 minefield or enter Zone 21 itself will be nullified without exceptions or exemptions. The Badlands. The Badlands is a bit 
reticulate cloud filled with asteroids and subject to intense electrical activity that renders most scanners inoperable. Two government research stations, Bedford and Ithaca, were constructed here to study these unique environmental phenomena. However, the Badlands also provide a natural refuge for all types of criminal elements. The battleship Missouri has been developed, uh, deployed to protect liberty interests in the area and deter pirate attacks against nearby trade lanes. I do not like the Badlands, personally. It gave me nightmares as I was a child. So, there is a quick location of the California Jump Gate, of the Texas Jump Gate, and of the Colorado Jump Gate. A little additional information. I didn't get there, but around that area is a Colorado Jump Hole. As you may have seen before, there is also a Jump Hole down here to Texas, near Buffalo Base, and a system internal jump wall for New York that has been used in the story. So, there we have it. This was the New York system. Everything noteworthy that can be found here. I could of course also mention that the sun is a medium white, that is like all the central systems, is a quarter, so four central trade lanes with a few outer arms, but not necessary I believe. You'll see all that and more during this series, I'll try to cover every single system. A few, in a few informations however. Around Pittsburgh there is a lot of rogue activity, around Detroit there is a lot of Xeno activity. Outcasts can be found especially close to Texas and of course a few in the Badlands. Lane hackers are very rare, I believe they aren't even showing in this system at all. Mostly you'll find rogues, a few Xenos, if you're unlucky outcasts if you're not equipped or capable to handle them, especially early on, because they can be quite troublesome. Um, if you have any suggestions on what I should cover, if I also should cover patrol lines, dangerous terrain, how and where to um, encounter what criminal organization, and maybe even a bit more about the organization themselves, let me know in the comment section. I'll gladly take any criticism, any advice under consideration because I aim to improve and especially I aim to just do something nice for Freelancer. So, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves, enjoy space if you should happen to play Freelancer right now or have to play it at all, of course. And I'm sure I'll see you in the next system guide. Next time will be Colorado, followed by California, Texas. First of Central Liberty Systems, and from there we go on around. I'll see you.